Hey crew, part two, we're gonna do, wow, that was a lot of rhyming. We're gonna do the icons and the text for our navigation that we started in part one. Part one link in the description. And if you want to toss a coin to your bubbler, go ahead, links in the description as well. We're gonna start by creating a new reusable element. And we're gonna go to obviously the responsive and upgrade to uh, the new responsive engine, which is much, much better than the old one. And we're going to go to layout and we're gonna pick a width for our UI builder. Uh, the width, we're just gonna build a 260 for now, so we have room to do stuff. And our min height will be 60 and our max height won't be 60, obviously. But our min height has to be 60 because every uh, one of our units or, or options is going to be a height of like we said, 60. Um, when we're talking about repeating groups, we're going to be loading uh, each of those options in one row and then repeating, and we need a place to pull those from. So we have two choices for repeating groups. We could load either from the app data or we could load from option sets. And the main difference is that option sets preload with the page making them faster and you only need to query the database once and pull all of this data and if you're going to be putting your navigation items on every page this is probably the suggested method rather than app data app data allows you to use permissions so for instance don't show this menu item unless you're an owner or unless you're a support staff etc but option sets are available to, I believe, everyone unless otherwise uh, built in, baked in as a condition. So what we could do uh, when you get started is you'll have an, an attribute called display and you can set up all of your uh, options, display names, and that's what we're going to use to uh, basically show on the page. These are the different display options. Once that's done for you, you can also add um, an image, an icon. And there are two ways to do this, or well, there's, there are way more than two ways, but two ways that I prefer. And one of them is by using text and SVG text. And the other one is by using simply an image. So in this video, we're going to just focus on using the images because they're the most intuitive, but using text is maybe faster and less uh, computationally intensive. Um, so when you do create your options, you're going to add also attributes. You can add two or three of them, depending. I have three because I have three states. First is the basic state, and then the hovered state, and then the selected state, uh, which uh, shows a filled in icon. If you want to use the same icon set I did, it's in uh, ionic.co slash ionicons v4, and you can download the entire designer pack and make the changes you need to to the SVG code. Um, it is MIT licensed, so you can go ahead and use that commercially, and they're just beautiful, beautiful icons. So go ahead and set up your icons that way by creating one, modifying the attributes, and adding either your image file, your image hub, and your image uh, selected or just file and hub, etc. Because I also use a shape to indicate to the user which page is currently selected, and we're going to do that as well. So, getting started with the layout, uh, did we create that 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 reusable element? Yes, we did. Okay, and we put in a repeating group, and let's play with the layout a bit. So we want it to be a row because we want things to stack horizontally. Uh, we want an icon and then some text horizontally for each cell. We do want it visible on page load. We won't need to collapse it because it'll never be hidden. The horizontal alignment to the left is fine. Um, and we don't want it fixed width. And we do want a minimum width of 60. And we do want the width to fit to its content. So because there's no content, we currently have it at 60. Um, and that's fine and we don't want it fixed height, and we do want its height to adjust to the content because we're going to be loading all of our menu options and we don't know how tall it needs to be. Um, let's go ahead and now load some content 
with uh, using da, 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 nav items, which is the name of my option set. Yours will reflect whatever you chose. So nav items is mine. Um, and the data source will be to get an option, and it's going to be nav items, and I'm just going to load all of them. Now I have a bunch of tests, and I believe it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. So we're going to go items until number seven. Perfect. Now that that those are loaded in, we do want we don't want a fixed number of rows. Uh, we want maximum rows, and we want them sixty at a minimum. And we do want a fixed number of columns for our layout. Yours might be different. You might want two. You might want four. I'm not sure. So we don't want a separator because they're ugly. And the background style, I don't know. And the layout, uh, does it all look good? I think we went through this tab already. Okay. So now our repeating group is set up and we'll load seven navi, navi items. Um, now we want to display some stuff related to that data. So we're going to put in a group. This one is going to be aligned to parent, and I'll explain that in a bit. But for now, it's not it's never going to be hidden, so we don't need it collapsed. Um, we don't care about the vertical alignment because it's fixed. It will always be 60 by fixed height of 60, and we don't need to scroll. OK, now we have a group. And in this group, this is going to be the GR icon, let's say. And we're going to load in uh, two things, the first being a shape, like we said. Whoa, thank you. <laughs> OK, and we're going to go uh, not fixed width, and we're going to go not fixed height. And it's actually fixed width is fine at four pixels. And the fixed height, uh, the height is fine. We're going to grab the shape here, and we're going to stick it right into repeating group uh, nav items and right into the actual icon group so that it appears here. That's perfect. And we want it to be centered and to the left, OK? Uh, minimum height of 150, no, 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 zero. And then let's do some appearance stuff. We want it red. We want the corners on the top right to be five and bottom right to be five or 10 or whatever it is that you prefer. Uh, and now we have a little thing showing up when this is selected. For now, we will hide it and we'll only show it when we're navigating. OK, so we'll do that in the next video. In this video, we're just doing the layout and making sure everything works. <clears throat> so we don't need the selector yet. The image itself will also be uh, fixed, but you could and centered like this. It will be visible on page load. And uh, 32, nah, let's go 28 just for, um, for some fun. You could do a dynamic width. Uh, where it grows and shrinks, and you can keep the aspect ratio fixed, one to one or whatever. Um, but in our case, we do want a 28 by 28 fixed always. Now we need to load an image. So let's go to the group here icon, and let's pull the data from the actual repeating group that's under it, and it is a nav item. So we're going to click here, type of content, nav items, and it's going to be current cells nav item. And then we're going to pull the dynamic image because we want the image file, so the unselected image. And then we want when hovered, when uh, ba, ba, ba. yes, repeating group nav items is hovered, or this image, not this image, it's 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 group group icon is hovered, or the next group is hovered. Um, we don't have that yet. Uh, we want the image source to change to parent groups nav items image hub. I hope that makes sense so far, and we're going to test it in just a moment because we're going to put in text group, which will essentially show um, the correct. Might as well do that now. Uh, it's not inside the repeating group. We want to make sure that it's inside the repeating group so we can access it. Now it ended up on the left, so let's go layout and make last or second, whatever. The vertical alignment will be centered like this, and it's not going to be fixed width. It's going to fit to its content with a min width of 80. Let's say, why not? And fixed height? Mm, no, we're going to let it expand and, and shrink depending on what it needs to be. Um, is it going to collapse when hidden? Absolutely, it's going to collapse when hidden. And now we're going to load it with current cells, nav items, display, bing, bang, boom. 
Now there is a 16 pixel margin here, um, which is exactly what we wanted, why I picked 60 in the first place. If uh, you want, you could put the margin and the padding on the text itself. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is pick a small title. And the reason I'm picking this one is because I have a line spacing of one and I center the text vertically as well. So that makes it look quite cute and lines it up with its icon, okay? So in the image, we have the conditional when group icon is hovered or mm, the text, uh, what is it called? Text current cells nav item is hovered, okay? We want this image to be the hub and we can actually just copy this condition, paste it into the text and change the font color to match the image color, boom. Next thing in the layout, uh, it's going to be weird if somebody hovers on this group and it becomes red and then all of a sudden they ho hover here over the text everything turns from red to something else. We don't want that. So we actually want this one to take up at a minimum, the full height of its parent container, which means 100%. Now we have our setup. Uh, this one is visible on page load. We undo that conditional when it's hovered or the group is hovered, then we make this visible. This might not work, I might need to to add a group behind them, I'll let you know in just one second. Now, we have a group, Navi, who has a layout and who has um, a repeating group loading all of our stuff. And when we hover either on this or on the text, it should pop out and show it. So we're gonna go ahead and load Navi, the reusable, into our little setup we made yesterday. Let's go and find it. Where is it? Right here. And let's put it inside the group. Boom. Now, preview. <clears throat> and if it works out of the box, that would be awesome. Okay, it's working. Good stuff. So you can see that when you hover on the group, um, it shows up. And that's not exactly what we want. We want all of the um, text to show up if anything is hovered. And we only want the font color to change if that particular one is hovered. So we're gonna go and make that change really quickly. Did we? No, we didn't have that. Let's grab the text and say conditional when, we're gonna remove the element is visible, I put it on the wrong one. Let's go repeating group, nav items is hovered, then this element is visible. And that'll load all of the texts in the repeating group as soon as the repeating group is hovered. And let's just check that quickly like that. And now only the one that's selected is actually um, hovering, uh, showing a hover color, sorry. And uh, this works. Okay, let's now make the floating group expand to cover the width necessary. And we're gonna do that by clicking on Navi, going to layout and saying, this element is visible on page load, sure. It doesn't have a fixed width but we do want it to fit to content. And the next thing we need to make sure is that its parent group also fits to content and the repeating, the floating group itself fits to content. Okay, if everything is fitting to content, when we hover, it should just disappear like that. <laughs> no, it just took a while to look. Perfect. Last thing, there's a little bit of a margin issue here. So let's go ahead and grab our text. Hello, and go layout, right, and we're gonna add 16 pixels to keep it consistent with the rest of, this might not work. I don't wanna, I, I might have to add padding instead. No, it worked. So there's your 16, adjusting to the width of the content, and that's how you quickly create pop-out menus in bubble.io. If you have any questions, please do ask them in the comments below. And thank you for watching. I hope it was useful.